Well, hello. Finally, I have another <laughs> video ready. I'm not very prolific with these videos. But I finally have another video ready. I've been procrastinating and editing and all that stuff, and I didn't do a very good job on it. One of my computers, they have a good editor, went back in to oblivion, so I had to do it with another computer that was older and had an older editor. But that's too much blah blah. And it. I have uh, I have built this uh, flip top. As you know, I moved to the garage, my shop to the garage, and trying to scramble for room, so I don't have too much room. And these machines are heavy to keep it under the bench or something and lift it up every time I gotta use it. So what I did, I built a flip top. The uh, internet is full of those things, but I built it a little bit higher and uh, with a technique that I don't have to put anything in between here and it has a shelf underneath where I can store all the tools that are a little bit lighter like the, and I don't use very often like this scroll saw and I'm going to populate another machine out there it's not that important right now anyways when I use the uh, the miter saw I can extend these wings so I got extra support for the uh, for the uh, wood that I wanted to cut and whatnot. And I built this shelf out here. It's just another, it's not a box. It's just a little shelf, empty, to support the wood when I feed it in. It won't it won't try to snipe, and it give me time to come back to the other side and receive it. That's the only thing this thing does. Since the height of these is it's higher than the surface of the flip top. I had to build it a little bit higher. And I close it. Well, this is just a cosmetic. Uh, here I had to plane these blocks to, to correspond exactly the height when I flip the table with the height of the, the uh, turntable on the miter saw. And without any more yapping uh, I'll bring you to the construction of this nice table. It's got wheels and uh, the wheels are height hidden in there so there's no problem you know I just keep the same height. I lift the same height because of my back man. I don't like to work very low anymore. My benches are higher than normal even my uh, my uh, uh, my saws and everything is a little bit higher than common. That is the thing, and that is the reason I like to keep my my uh, my my machines and my uh, workbenches and everything a little bit higher. My back, my age, my stomach. <laughs> this is just a view of the joint that we are going to make a full strong joint. Well, the camera unfortunately did what it was supposed to do and uh, tapered down the sound because the saw was too loud. So what I'm trying to show you out here is the way I made the four-way cut and I put a piece of scrap wood behind it to prevent a blow up. And uh, that's all. Okay, this is the joint I was talking to you about this is one half of the joint that goes out right here there very good now I put this other joint right in here and they cross each other now it's, this is a extremely strong joint and uh, much better if you go just up to the just up to the shoulder and that's it so 
I will build this uh, flip top and this and this with this technique. So the bottom I have to be holding the rest of it because the the top it will not have a rail across. So that will be a problem. So what I'm going to do is put a tube on the very top with an old thread inside and holding the sides with a large washers holding the sides so it will not uh, perhaps to say they will rock and that will that's what is going to give me the uh, rigidity on the top all right we'll four joints so I'm gonna put it in this way That's one side. Make sure we go all the way to the bottom. Now, now let me back up so I can show you how to do the whole enchilada. Basically, the carcass need to trim a little bit the inside here, but we all basically have the carcass nice and strong uh, the way we want it with those uh, triple the uh, triple action uh, joints in the bottom. Uh, and now we start, I started to build the top, the uh, the turnable top. Now we're going to make it like a box. Uh, uh, about that thick with the three-quarter ply and the top and three-quarter ply in the bottom they use the best quality ply you can find uh, with no uh, gaps in the middle you know what I'm talking about and plugs and whatnot then what I did if I got a few boards you know four the, yeah they're four and I cut a uh, uh, a three-quarter rebet, rebet, rebet out here, a rabbit, and uh, now I'm going to build a box. I just got the rabbit, now I have to do some cutting out here to build the uh, corners, but basically it's going to be a box that is going to accomplish either rabbit is in the t front and, the, and both sides it will be at the top and the bottom or depends where it rotates it will be the top and the bottom and both sides of that four uh, inches flank now I'm going to build a box and then it's going to be a tube of a water pipe about a three quarter of an inch water pipe with two hand flanges. What that's going to do is going to keep the thing from rocking. Oh, want it to rock. Right now it's not rocking. It's nice and glued, but the constant movement probably can, so it's a flange that you know, keep it from from angling and rocking. So I had to pass it out 
it's uh, one more thing. The flange is going to have to be on the outside, or it's no place enough for the inside. I would have had to leave too much of a gap. So the flanges need to be on the outside out uh, here. So the pipe is going to come through, and I'm going to put the pipe flanges and screw the flan 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 uh, pipe flanges, the pipe flanges to the wood. So I'll get back when I. And start building the boxes out here. I had a little more work to do, and then we can start building the box. Well, you see here, I finished building the box. Now I already mark the pivot place, the pivot place, so I can put a pipe through it. So what I'm going to do is I put this pipe through it and here is a flange it's going to be on the outside and they had the already the holes drilled so you can bolt it what it's going to do this is this flange is going to keep it from abling the whole structure from rocking or racking uh, the, the pipe uh, here it's a little bit smaller than 7 eighths. It's 55 64, you know, it's almost 15 16, but uh, almost 7 eighths. So I'm going to, I going to uh, drill it with a spade, a 7 eighths spade. And uh, that should be exactly what I wanted to do. It's just enough strength. Oops. All right. Uh, if we check for fit, perfect. Perfect fitting. Perfect fitting. Doesn't have no. No, uh, well, let's play a little close to the Long Beach Airport here. Plane passing through all day. But anyways, perfect fit. So let me finish drilling all the holes and we'll come back. Well, now that I have all the, all the uh, holes drilled up, going to start this. I don't want to get in the way. I'm going to start this uh, here. And I'm going to have to start to find the other side. I was able to, to get it through. Mallet, my wooden mallet. Already in. Now what we can do is put this flange on the other side. You'll see what I mean about those flanges. They're critical in these. See the sunshine sense. Let me focus a little bit the whole enchilada. See, since the front out here, since the front out here, since the front out here, it doesn't have any braces, this thing will have the tendency, although I build those three-way uh, joints out there, uh, the strongest I could, it ha will have the tendency to rock this way. Because it doesn't have, obviously, any braces, either front or back. So therefore, these flanges, being that the pipe is rigid, and they won't 
and the hide don't have enough room inside these holes to let it rock and they being also uh, screwed into these sides it will help a lot with the rocking I mean with preventing rocking as much as a is it possible? But that was one my one of my concerns. Another one that will be put. I need to say I it's pushed it too much. But anyways, I'll adjust this in a little bit. And uh, the other way is that after I mount, after I mount everything, I mount the uh, the uh, miter saw and the uh, and the. Uh, and the planer, my thickness planer, uh, I'll see if I have enough room in the bottom to put a, a small brace. But that's about it, you know, it's, it's almost done and I s need to do some adjustments right here, but obviously I squash it too much when I, when I put the pipe, and the pipe is, is not, it's not uh, loose and it's as tight as I can get it, you know, it's within a sixteenth of an inch from the from the pipe diameter. And any difference in the angle that I did when I drilled the holes by hand, because this structure is too big to put in a in the drill in a drill press. But I done it by hand. So a little bit of in the night Okay. Now that we have the uh, the flanges screwed in, the pipe is tied, and I installed the box and everything, and it's right with a little bit of friction because I put some draft washers made out of wood, said wood, so it will stay in the center and won't come to one side or another and create a problem. Just very thin shims that I put in there. About some wood I resaw and I, I made a like a shim two two halves. Like a washer but I cut it in half so I can put it in there without having to take it apart. And I glue it against the box. So that way it stays stays centered and they don't have to move back and forth. And the flanges and the thread on the pipe act like it, it won't uh, whiten anymore. So this is that. Apart, be, besides that, like I said before, the flanges and the pipe in combination with the screws and everything prevent it from racking. It's just a, uh, that's the problem I, when I was designing these. Uh, that's why I designed a very strong joint underneath and uh, uh, that way they won't rack that way. So now I would just kind of bend the base for it and uh, put the uh, casters so that way I can put it against the wall or wheel it when I need to use it. You know that's the whole point of building something like that. All right, and I like the height too. I hate when I had to walk, work in a bending down, you know, on a bench or something. And that's what my benches are a little bit higher. Look at the height on this, uh, on this uh, saw. This is a band saw that I made. That I always use it. And that's what I used to resaw this wood. It's a, it, to me, it's better than the sauce that you buy from the factory. But uh, this is my my preference saw, so, and I don't have to bend and look. You know, it's very close. It's a perfect height for me. Although people say, no, you know, that's too high. No, it's not. I can see what I'm doing, and I don't have to bend over. Uh, the only thing I would have to build a frame for my for my uh, uh, table saw, but that's for another discussion on uh, how high you want your table saw. But this is perfect for my uh, cutting uh, my miter saw or compound miter saw. 
and then using it for uh, uh, to play in the wood, you know, thickness planer. Now the thickness is going to come up to here. So, fine, no problem. All right. After I put the wheels, I, I now you can see I put the bottom on it, and I put in the casters. But since the caster is going to be inside, because I don't want to raise the table too much. So, when we put the casters in the inside place like that, that well, you have to make sure that there is enough clearance for the casters to turn around, see? Especially some break out here, and then I will not, not worry about it because I won't be able to get to it. But there is a break on it, and the break protrudes. So you have to separate it from the wall enough to you allow the caster to uh, to swivel around. So you, on the other side, I am going to put a straight wheel so I don't have that problem. See, on the other side, I'm going to use straight wheels so I wouldn't have that problem to but I have to put it more or less on the same line as the caster although the caster will swivel around so see there is no no problem out here so just a little tip so if you do it you don't have to do it twice well now you can see I have the and the four wheels already installed and I also have a a brake since I cannot reach underneath and lock the wheels I install a brake I mean when it's in the position I want it I just push this board down and uh, and that lift the wheel just a fraction from the ground and uh, and they'll rest on that so that way when I get in the position I want to I just step on this and I lock it in place so it won't move anymore I can put a piece of rubber too but I think it'll be the only way that they are resting it'll be enough to to keep it from from sliding all right well and here we go there is uh, the basic although I need to be finished with the wings for supporting the longer piece of the material up here I need some wings but basically here is the basic uh, make sure that everything Here is basically the, basically the thing. I made a little, I don't know if you can see it, but I got the camera pointed. Yeah, I made a little shelf right here with the same height of the output. So with shorter, uh, shorter boards, have a little bit of support and prevent sniping at the end. And the longer boards, I just have time to go to the other side and grab them. But that's, that's why I build these. There's nothing in it. It's just a... Uh, enough to to get them boards across and then when they try to tilt down you know I just prevent sniping on the when you only grab it with one roller and uh, this is that that fit plenty of of uh, this is uh, here the This is 
this side for the minus combine or whatever they uh, uh, so it's a minus uh, uh, tapered and so it does both things at the same time you know in German they call it they call it a compound so okay it's just more than a chop so it just also changes angles and makes it easier for me to do it and that's the whole idea I make this faster to do that now what I'm going to do is to elevate and this both sides just keep and make sure they still can be turned elevate both sides and put a couple of wings with a hinge. So when we store it, we bring the wings down and you can store it in a small place. When you need to use it with the wings to support your materials, basically your wood, you just lift up the wings and then lock them down and, uh, and then that will take care of it. Uh, and that will be the end. I think this sh uh, I, I wouldn't have any more, any more to add to it. Let me put the wings on and then I'll come back when, when I finish putting it. Bueno, as you can see, I'm only still in the wings on the, on the, on the, uh, on the, uh, on the flip top. But the thing is, if you look at this, the wings had to be installed and it had to be installed very carefully. The reason being is that everything it had to be in one lane. I mean, at the same level. You'll see uh, here now. How do I have everything on the same level? I put a straight edge, the straightest that you, I can find. And uh, if the two touch and be parallel at the same level with the bottom of the uh, pedestal or whatever the way you have, you put the wood on the on the uh, saw, and also it had to be touching and be parallel to the two wings left and right at the same exact level of the table, so that way. But we have a consistent surface all at the same level. Second, it had to be parallel. Let me let me show you out here. Permit me move the camera over here. Also had to be parallel. Oops. It also had to be parallel to the fence, so I can put another fence out here. To do that, I put the best uh, straight edge that I have. I put it. I clamp it to the fence, to the back of the fence, and then had to be parallel at the edge of the wing, so I can put another fence 90 degrees from here and it'll be everything be lined up so if I put a piece of wood out here it'll all be lined up with a fence and all be lined up with the top of the, the uh, chop saw bed bed so everything you have to be lined up once I did that then I installed the hinges perfect perfect angle perfect level perfect everything so that way, when I start working on it, I don't have to worry about it as out of, out of service, out of uh, alignment, per se. Okay? The brace to hold the wings up. See out there, I put a brace to hold up the wing. That way, it's... I can remove it and fold the wing down. I'm not going to do it now because I need to do it for the other side. 
But, uh, and that's, that's about it. Well, as you see, it's already finished. I'm glad that it's finished. It was a little bit of work, but it's been done, thank God. <laughs> now, if you see this thing is a little bit high, for some people it might be a little bit high. To me, it's perfect. I don't like to bend on my edge anymore. Call me lazy. A board is not that heavy to lift it to this high and, and not have to bend to make sure it's aligned perfectly to the to the cut. Also, and the other side is the uh, planer, the, the, the thickness planer. So it's, it doesn't matter because normally you don't put very heavy uh, material to it. So the, uh, the support for the wings are over here on the stud and that's and that's good enough for what we need. Also, if I like to turn it around, it's also let me let me lock this down. Let me lock this down so I got some torque around. Okay. See that the stability is okay. And you, if you pull the plug, I mean, you pull the uh, the bolt, it doesn't it doesn't just drop on you. And here is the uh, the thickness planer. You fit. I put this uh, here, like I said before, for a. Uh, so it prevents sniping a little bit and the short boards. If it's a long board, you can run, put one and come to the other side and receive it. So that's not that much of a problem. But the, with a short board, sometimes it it tries to the way it to when it releases the the uh, the input roller, it has to pick up and produce a little bit of sniping unless you try to balance it, but this one it helps a lot. So, I hope you like it. I have a shelf underneath with, with the height that help me to keep a shelf underneath. You can keep whatever you need to keep. Also, in this box right here, you can pick the handle and the, 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 the uh, cores for it. You can coil them in there. So when you turn it around, it doesn't, it doesn't produce cause the problem out there and you get the handle for the thing to play it, swing it and go up and down. I hope you like it and enjoyed it.